Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. We'll, we'll just officially call this season two at this point. I'm not really thinking in seasons, but, but glad to kick off season two with author and artist creator Joey Weiser. May I call you Joey? Is that okay? Yeah, go right ahead. Hi, great, great. thanks for having me. My pleasure. You you and I just saw each other in person at Heroes Con in Charlotte. So great to connect with you there. There there's so many other people that I want to connect with there as well that I didn't get the chance to talk to. But oh, so yeah. glad that I it's talked with you. Packed with artists. There's all sorts of people, friends of mine that I don't even see when I'm there because it's just so many people. <laughs> oh yeah. But yeah, that's a great show. I love that show. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm glad to hear that it's good on the the creator side as well, because on the the fan and reader side, it's just it's amazing. And um, I have two friends that go there at about the same time, and we barely see each other because mm -hmm. uh, you know we're sort of walking around, and it's it's almost like Jim Henson's Labyrinth. I mean, you just go, and it's like, hey, we might be in the same place. Um, just so much to explore there. So so great to have connect connected in person there and now great to talk with you in zoom as well and i'm gonna show some appreciation for your space because i see lots of uh books back there it looks like oh, lots yeah. of comics and graphic novels and, and then a, an action figure or two so um great space <laughs> that you're in as well oh yeah the rest of my apartment is just this times a thousand so many books and figures and fun stuff uh this is Mostly zines back there, as well as the, that. This right here are all my books uh, and some Love other it. stuff beyond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I actually uh, I connected with your work because I did a couple of years of the Excellence in Graphic Literature Awards and Ghost Hog was nominated for one of those. So it, oh, it was awesome. one that. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Loved the creativity. It's currently. Uh, housed and continuing to be read by young people in my wife's middle school classroom so uh, that was how Thanks. i first connected with your with your stuff and then of course uh checked out dragon racer from there as well cool yeah that's great that's what i i love to hear that because i think a lot of folks uh merman tends to be the touch point just because i have there's mm -hmm. five of those and so people have run into them uh here and there uh, but I'm glad to see that I'm still picking up new faces uh, with the newer books because uh, I think the books just get better and better <laughs> yeah, as yeah. I continue to work on them. Well, a lot of a lot of authors and artists have that thing of like, I'm here now. But then the, there's that beautiful journey of like how mm -hmm. it started, too. And Merman was the book that I, I picked up from you when I saw you in person because I actually hadn't read it. And it's the mm -hmm. the foundational joey weiser the um, <laughs> the starting work you said you have five of those um which is just a, an impressive series and it's so great for readers to connect with a world that can sort of unfold in that way oh yeah yeah thank you for sure yeah uh yeah my, my general philosophy with comics is just if it's fun to make hopefully it will be fun to read as well so i just you know merman especially was just like how many fun ideas can i pack into this and I was really excited by the idea of doing like a continuing series. So that 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 was my first and only uh, attempt at doing that at, at some point. And so, you know, I, I did the five books and was like at the fifth book. It wasn't like I was sick of it or anything like that. But it was like, well, this these are the five books I had planned. So mm -hmm. I could either do more Merman or do something new. And I was excited by the idea of doing something new. And so that's where Ghost Hog came from. Yeah, yeah. Now you were nominated for an Eisner, is that right? That's right. Yeah, Merman Book Three was nominated for an Eisner Award and actually got a Georgia Book Award as well. Um, I think the Eisner nomination may have kind of put it uh, on the radar of the Georgia Center for the Book, who gave it an award as a, a book all young Georgians should read, which was a nice <laughs> thing. <laughs> and that was cool. Yeah. And in both cases, I got to go to like award ceremonies and stuff like that and went out to San Diego for the Eisner and all that stuff, which was really fun. And it didn't it didn't win the Eisner. But, you know, as they say, it's it is genuinely true that it, it was kind of amazing just to be nominated. Like um, I wasn't really considering my work, the kind of work that got awards or nominations or considerations like that. Um, and that's the book that showed me that maybe that could happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now, you mentioned 
all young Georgians should read your work. I'm going to expand that um, beyond Georgia, uh, mm -hmm. as well as, uh, you know, one of the questions that I have is what's it like to to write and create for uh, young people and to be embraced by young people. But I'm also going to say, you know, I'm 40, almost 41, and um, I, I enjoy your books as well. So, uh, you know, I can say you're you're uh, an artist who works for youth, but you also kind of work for for anyone that wants to read mm -hmm. a fun and imaginative imaginative. That's how you say that <laughs> uh, book. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd love to nod that the work can be embraced by young people, but also can basically be read by anybody that enjoys comics. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. That's something I strive for. I think my first love in comics were comic strips, which are created for just a general audience. And um, when I was getting into comics, like coming into the industry, there was a term that was being said a lot, which was all ages comics. And that's been okay. sort of shied away from as bookstores and libraries and schools and everything need to be able to categorize things. And I understand that. But the idea of all ages is really the thing that excites me, you know, and so that's I try to create something that can be enjoyed by everyone and then uh, let the publisher figure out who it's for, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so and so my books get categorized as middle grade, which is like grades three through five uh, as kind of maybe the, the sweet spot of like the perfect spot for readers. But I have readers that are younger and older than that. Mm -hmm. And that's really exciting to me. Um, yeah. But it's it's I love that kids love my comics like I, I um you know, I just like I said, I just kind of created the kinds of comics I wanted to make and and having that foundation of comic strips and loving books like Bone by Jeff Smith, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just kind of turned into these comics that people were saying were great kids comics. And it was like, OK. And once I kind of had that in mind, it was easier to maybe lean a little bit more in that direction uh, with the work. Yeah, I, I wish that libraries worked in a way that you could sort of have a section that was like specific, but then you could almost swipe up and go, OK, these could be read <laughs> by anybody. Uh, yeah, I, I wish it had the, the libraries and physical spaces had that possibility. Um, so, so I mean, what... I, I understand that when there's so much possibility, so many books out there, you need to be able to narrow it down your search somehow, you know, and, and if you're a parent or a teacher looking for your third grader book the easiest thing is just to kind of like well let's just start with the middle grade books and see what we've got there you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. yeah. true enough what were the the books the artists the authors the titles the the inspirations that pulled you into this world of of creating yeah i mean like i said comic strips were the big one i loved mm -hmm. calvin and Hobbes and bloom county especially when i was a kid um and later uh, you know, embraced peanuts as kind of one of the great comic strip masterworks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was a big X Men reader. Um, of like superhero comics at that same time, but it seemed like such a big divide between like those kind of comic books and these kind of comic strips. And so finding Bone was a really big uh moment for me, where I could kind of see the marriage of uh long form storytelling with this comic strip sensibility. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, you know, finding other independent comic books like The Tick was a good kind of uh, transition between like serious superheroes and more kind of independent books. And then uh, finding manga was a big thing for me, too, because manga uh, really mixes humor and action and sincerity and drama in, in a very uh, great way. And um, I tend to like a lot of like action stuff like one piece is a big favorite of mine um you know when i was younger and i still love akira toriyama's work although dragon ball and dr slump are kind of harder to recommend for all ages um mm -hmm. as it has some outdated humor and things like that in it but um but yeah i love stuff that has a lot of action and humor and and fun characters yeah yeah i love that love it and um so so what do you hope readers then take away from your work as they engage with it? Yeah, um, you know, I hope that they like bond with the characters. One of my favorite things in comics is like find, feeling the characters come to life. Um, and that's a big part of when I'm 
writing. I'm also drawing because I really like seeing the actor, like the characters act. I don't personally like to use a lot of narration and things like that because I want to really just have the characters tell the story through their actions and dialogue and things like that themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just really want readers to like, um, you know, connect with the characters and feel like they know them and that they like them and they want to spend time with them um, and have a sort of fantastic adventure of some sort. You know, I tend to set uh, my books in kind of fantasy worlds and have lots of creatures and things just because that's like the fun thing for me to draw. Yeah, um, yeah. Merman was kind of a mix where it was like a fantasy element in the real world. Um, and then I kind of pushed it even further with Ghost Hog and Dragon Racer, where I was like, well, let's just like mostly only have creatures and animals and stuff as the characters and and set it in a world where anything's possible. And um, I, I just want readers to have as much fun reading it as I have like imagining it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to have that passion and great to have that creativity on the page. Are you are you a person who works on paper first, or do you work digitally, or do you do a kind of a combination of both? It's a combination. I um I draw like all the like line art is mostly drawn on paper and then scanned into uh, a computer and then I color digitally. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do as much on paper by hand as possible. I do the lettering by hand and, um, it's penciled and inked, uh, straight on the paper, um, which is partially just, uh, my age and how I was taught. There wasn't a lot of like digital art. Uh, it was just kind of the beginnings of digital art when I was in college and when I was really learning tools and stuff. And so that's what I'm comfortable with. Um, I draw more digitally now, but mostly still and things a lot of times i will sketch something out digitally so i can kind of get an idea of how things work and if i want to like do as easily on paper um but once it comes down to time to make the final art i still like to do that on paper i just like to feel the tools and 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 all that stuff yeah yeah absolutely and i love how that comes through on the page too um so any current projects, uh, ideas that you're currently working through, upcoming events, things like that, that you'd like to share about, as well as any web spaces where people can go in and check sure. out your work? Yeah, well, I'm working on a new book and it's unannounced, so I can't like, uh, you know, <laughs> can't give too many details. But if people know me and know my work, as I've been saying, you know, I talk a lot about liking to draw creatures and and monsters and kaiju and things like that and and so it's kind of in that realm i can i can say that much mm-hmm. um but i really do want people to check out dragon racer which we got right here dragon racer yes, yes. um uh because that came out a few years ago but it was over the pandemic where mm-hmm. there wasn't um a really great way to promote it you know i wasn't able to do signings and take it to conventions and people weren't able to go out to bookstores so i think it's one of mine that is still relatively unread uh compared to some of my older work so i i think that folks should definitely check it out and dragon racer is the story of Vern here who's a dragon that drives in a uh big race every year against a bunch of other animals uh but the other animals make fun of him and say that he's more interested in covering his cart in shiny decorations than being a great driver uh, mm-hmm. And he's he's kind of determined to show them uh, differently this year. And, and that's where the story starts and, and goes in other unexpected places. And so I think people that are fans of uh, my work will enjoy it. Um, and it is self-contained, although it has some of the characters from Ghost Hog. So if you've read Ghost Hog, you'll be happy to see those characters pop up again. Mm-hmm. But if this is your first book for me, you can read it and you won't be lost or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, please, please check out Dragon Racer. Uh, as far as upcoming events, the only thing I really have on the books at the moment is in the fall. I'll be at Baltimore Comic Con, uh, okay. which I'm really excited about. That's a show I haven't been to in ages and ages, but people always talk about how great a show that is for kids comics authors uh, in particular. And so I'm really looking forward to returning and uh, being in the kids comics space there. And uh, as far as online, I'm going to be people can find me on Instagram at Joey Weiser Comics, where I post um, 
anything related to art. The Instagram is very art focused where I post whatever I am working on that I can share. I post about upcoming events, graphic novels, things like that. Um, and they can also follow me if they want a bit more variety uh, of content. They can post, uh, follow me on Twitter at Joey Wise. Talk about, uh, I do talk about my art, but I also talk about whatever I want to talk about, like comics I'm reading or more of a grab bag of content. <laughs> uh -huh, but uh -huh. if you want just like the art, just the art, uh, check out the Instagram. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Um, and I, I'll mention Ghost Talk once more because uh, I did check it out. During the pandemic, I was reading a lot. Um, and so I think there needs to be a whole movement of like, in case you missed it, you know, uh, <laughs> for books that came out in that time period. But definitely recommend it um, and glad to share about it. And uh, I'm also going to mention you do school visits for educators because I know I a good number of educators. I'm connected with um, literacy profs, educators, and uh, people in that field. So anything that you want to share about information related to school visits? Sure. So if you go to my website, which is tragic-planet.com, it's a kind of tricky to say out loud, but it looks good on the browser, but uh, mm -hmm. tragic-planet.com or just Google Joey Weiser website or something on, and you can find, find it. Um, I have a tab that says author visits and you can click on that and see all the information. I have two kind of different tracks that I do. I can, I can talk, do a presentation of a creative talk where I talk about uh, how I write and draw comics. I can also have a career talk where I talk about the uh, steps I got to be a published author and where I've gone from there. The creative talk is tends to be better for a younger audience and the creative and the career talk is kind of more focused at an older audience, but I can combine them or tailor them to whatever you'd prefer. Um, and I can also do workshops where we draw along. Uh, I teach the kids how to draw some of my characters. And I really love doing um, school visits. So uh, if folks check that out, they can see all the information about what I offer and, and rates and things like that there. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Well, anything that I've missed on our on our talk through? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this is pretty good. Pretty thorough yep. talk. Um, I think we hit the main talking points. Um, I do hope that uh, people check out the books and I'm always happy to hear feedback from folks. Um, my just today I've been working on a commission of drawing someone's son who's a big fan of Merman uh, with, oh, with the Merman characters and things like that. So if people want to reach out and want like custom signed books and things like that, they can message me on the various platforms or find my email on my website. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, jumping on and talking with me and uh, hope to see you again next year at Heroes Con. I, I need to make my way to Baltimore. That I've heard that's a really good show. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your work. I appreciate it a lot and appreciate your time. All right. Thanks for having me.